But we're going to go to the question that we're doing tonight. And I'm going to bring that question up right now. And it's a question that deals with P-traps. Now, again, all these questions are a little bit different, but they show up on exams all the time. These kind of little pieces of the questions and little pieces of the code that all of you may not understand, may not know, that we're just going to try to cover and help you. We're not going to go over everything because you know what? We want you to come to our online classes and we want to go more in depth with formulas, with different types of requirements and the language and the definitions of the code. But tonight, again, we're going to talk about traps. So again, we open up all the time with a, a fact. And again, this week, like last week with the with the expansion joint, the PVC expansion joint, we're going to talk about the fact plumbing parts and fittings recognition. So just trying to set you up, give you an idea of the question, what we're going to be asking with you. And again, there are numerous types of fittings, tubing and devices and accessories that are used in a rough and finished plumbing system. And again, all fittings, tubings, devices and accessories are required to meet applicable performance standards in compliance with ANSI, ASME, ASSSE, ASTM, including many other model custom code accepted testing organizations. Now, what does that all mean? For those of you who may be joining us and are not a plumber or not an apprentice plumber and we're just looking for general knowledge, these are all, those definitions all apply to testing agencies that test and approve the products that go into your home or that any of you plumbers and gas fitters and apprentices are using or are learning about in school. And all these products have to be tested by these nationally recognized agencies in order for them to be safe. Because uh, to be honest with you, I've seen many times in cases where plumbing fixtures have been imported into the U.S. that don't meet some of the safety standards that are required to be installed in anybody's homes and are frankly dangerous. So it's always good to double check and make sure you check with the authorities having jurisdiction and the authorities that are associated with any state agency that approves this materials. And that's kind of why we bring those up. We kind of drive that home and this is the fact um, with questions that deal with fittings just to keep you kind of in the loop with what's going on and how that works. And as we go into our online training classes, we'll talk more and more about that. We'll talk more and more about the definitions and abbreviations of those agencies because you're going to get asked sometimes for those of you apprentice plumbers, journeyman plumbers who are in class or in school, those are going to come up on exams. So the given, the given is like you have a fact and now we're giving you just a scenario of kind of a generalization of what's going on. Some of the givens in uh, any of our sample testing and any of our online classes, the givens are much more extensive. They, they set you up for a particular whatever is going on at a job, kind of giving you the actual surroundings and the conditions that are happening. And then the question will be sometimes based on that given. And these are the way a lot of, a lot of learning agencies and a lot of schools and e-learning e sessions are done to help you understand a bit more what we're trying to accomplish by asking you the question in the way we ask it. So in this particular given, it's talking about the fittings and the image provided are styles of P-traps. So when you look at the image down there just below, just be just next to the answers that are provided, you see there's actually an image of a brass P-trap. You see DWV, why is it a P-trap? Because if you turn that thing on its side, if you turn that trap up on its side, it kind of looks like a P. There are many types of traps. There are traps they call drum traps. There are full S traps. There are bottle traps. There are an array of all styles of traps. Some, are, some of those traps are not approved by the codes anymore, and some of them are. And again, in our online testing, we'll talk to you about those and, and present you with questions regarding traps that are approved, traps that are not approved, and where you can and cannot use them in the plumbing system. Because you know what? In old buildings, you're still going to encounter some of this stuff. And it doesn't mean you have to tear it out. Maybe many cases across every state in this country that you can most likely use an existing trap. 
So these are called P-traps. Again, one's a brass P-trap and it has no clean out in it. And then the one beside it is a PVC P-trap, a Schedule 40 PVC P-trap that use solvent welding. You have a primer and you have a, a glue. When, they, we, when, we, when we put those together, it's called solvent welding. And this is a brass P-trap that you would solder together. Uh, they're both considered DWV, drainage waste and venting fixtures, or our fittings. So the question today is, and again, this is off the sample test, is what answer below shall be considered most correct to complete the following parts and fittings related statement. The minimum size P-trap that must be used for a floor drain or floor sink is blank. So we're going to talk about that really quickly and the majority of the model and custom codes across the country, not only Massachusetts, but a lot of similar codes have a minimum P-trap size. And in some cases, they have a minimum P-trap size that's relevant to being underground. So if you, when you install piping underground, there is typically, when you're talking about the drainage and venting of piping underground, there is typically a minimum size required. Because you know what, it's going to be buried in dirt and sand and stone, and whatever the material that's necessary to compact around the piping, and then you're never going to be able to get at it, usually. And if you have a failure with that piping or it's not sized right, you just can't get it at it as freely as if you're hanging in a ceiling or you were in a basement. So one of the things we're going to talk about is that minimum size for a floor sink and a floor drain. So we're going to look at, we, so the answers we have are four. We have four multiple choice answers, A being 2 inch, B being 3 inch, C being 4 inch, and D being an inch and a half. Now the case with this thing, the case with these answers are that a minimum size for a floor drain is basically is based on fixture unit, a drainage fixture unit value. So one of the things in here, you look at this, and this would be strictly out of the code, strictly a code requirement where you either know it or you don't. There's kind of no, there's kind of no elimination or what answers are right or wrong. If you've been paying attention to your teachers, instructors, reading code books, get to the sections that's dealing with fixtures and, and fittings, maybe even showers. I know in Massachusetts, showers have a minimum size P-trap, but some states allow you to do a different size. In this case, we're going to talk about Massachusetts primarily. And right off the bat, I'm going to tell you that the minimum size floor drain or P-trap for a floor drain or a floor sink in Massachusetts, and even a shower stall, is going to be 2 inch. The other numbers, the 3 inch could be for, you could have 3 inch, but it's not the minimum. You could have 4 inch, but it's not the minimum. An inch and a half, inch and a half pretty much is the distractor. I know I'm kind of contradicting myself, but it pretty much is a distractor, even though there are some states throughout the region that would allow inch and a half for a trap size underground, not too many. Some of them only allow it in uh, when you are doing renovations in a building, but most of the time you want to stay with two inch and two inch is typically the minimum size outlined in language for by any custom or model code. So that's pretty much all we have for you tonight. One thing I want to tell you as we go to our website page is you want to visit us at theplumbingacademy.com at www.theplumbingacademy.com and please talk to your friends, like us on Facebook, share us on Facebook when you have a chance. Uh, that helps us out with our connections and people we want to t get in touch with. And we'll see you next week with another question off of our plumbing sample exam. Thank you very much.